Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Man Bites Film. My name is Lewis. And uh, John Reed Adams. Our awesome guest here. And what shows ha have you done and what shows are you doing currently? Uh, right now, um, I uh, my channel is Narcotic Casserole Productions. You can find it on YouTube. I have series like the Cinema Schlock Society, where I lure unsuspecting uh, Soon to be former friends to watch the worst <laughs> movies to offer. In fact, uh, for Christmas coming up with The Last Jedi, we're going to be doing a Life Day edition. Nice. Okay. Which for anyone who know <laughs> any any Star Wars fan who knows the ramifications of Life Day, that's yeah. uh, that's going to be quite special. So, and we also do live streams via our Facebook. Okay. So we can so they can watch us suffer. Oh, suffer and I've seen it. some of them. I mean, they're great. Yeah. yeah. They're so good. Um, and uh, but we also have ones called. Um, the um, close examinations, where I just really close, you know, like really dissect certain aspects of fandoms, and for the whole month of November, we've been doing uh, Double November, yeah. where I'm doing review after review of all the Bond films. So. Yeah, I've, saw, I've seen a couple of them. They're really cool. Like it, you do the the non-spoiler um, breaking down the film, but not giving too much away, which is great. Well, it's just a reason. Pretty much anyone who's going to be watching these are obviously Bond fans in their own right, so they've seen the movie, so why bother getting into the synopsis? And yeah. getting the synopsis means automatic spoilers, so you might as well just jump into dissecting the movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, That's very true. So, which movie did you want to review today? Uh, today, actually, I want to focus on a severely underappreciated Ridley Scott uh, film, by, and which featured Nicolas Cage, called Matchstick Men. It was based on a novel, uh, a very short novella by... Um, Eric Garcia, and it was it's essentially, and the book labels it a, a story about con men with issues. <laughs> and yeah, it's a, it's it was kind of interesting. I mean, anyone who's ever, if you love a good con man movie, this is a great con man movie. Like, in actually, yeah. many people have associated with uh, Paper Moon. They they kind of put it well in the sense of a con man with his daughter. Okay, I can see that. Kind of. Thing. All right, that's see that. kind of where they go with it. But the, it has a amazing cast it was a very offbeat film for Ridley Scott of all people to do oh yeah it's a comedy first this, and foremost this was when he lost his mind a little bit just a, just a skosh just a skosh just a little yeah. bit <laughs> this was before he went completely apeshit and, and lost yeah. his mind and lost his artistic value whatsoever and then he somehow some way even in lieu of Prometheus still was able to get it back so he's, he's back yep. on top yeah which Definitely. says a lot about his ability to adjust to the times yeah, I, I shame to say I'm. I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but unfortunately, his brother wasn't as able able to follow suit. Oh, his movies were great. I loved his movies, even when he totally lost yeah. it and went out there. It was just, <laughs> you know, if you're gonna commit to going crazy and losing your mind, commit to <laughs> crazy and losing your mind, and that's what he did, and he did a great job of it. Well, this, well, and uh, interesting segue, speaking of going nuts randomly, uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, this is actually, I think, one of his standout performances. I'd easily put it in my top five, principally because he plays a con man who has a very severe case of obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> yeah. There's an amazing, there's an incredible montage in this film where after he pulls a con and he's just waiting for the dust to settle on it, he's just sitting there in his house and there's a, like a two, three minute montage of him cleaning this house to the point where he is <laughs> scrubbing the underside of his bar stools with a toothbrush. <laughs> I yeah. mean, Nick Cage, he, a lot of people underestimate him. And if you really watch some of his really great films, like uh, Bring Out the Dead. Yeah. Oh, oh Bring Out the Dead is, that's another um, underrated, not just Nicolas Cage, but a very underrated Scorsese. Yeah. Uh, as well, there's never been, really been a movie about ambulance drivers or, and, losing and the their shit. losing their losing their shit, the stress of the job. It wow. was great to see a movie that focused on that. And Nick Cage, that was a great role for him. Yeah. Because if there's any actor who's really good at showing off, playing a character who has some mileage on him. Oh yeah. That was definitely a good one for him. And that's when, and actually, it was around that that movie came out relatively around the time we did movies like Adaptation. Yes. And and this one, and that's when I kind of came to this revelation that he's a, he's really great when he plays a role of a character who's not all there because it can be argued that he's not really all there. Bad lieutenant. Bad lieutenant as as well. So I think that's where he's kind of he's out of his league when he's trying to be glamorous when yeah. he's trying to be yeah and. He plays a crazy guy well. Yeah, he plays crazy really well, or at the very least, someone who's self-destructive. I mean, he won his Oscar for playing a self-destructive character. Yeah. So very it true. seems to be that he, he seems to me he's better at playing characters with a kind of neuroses to him, and he's 
I don't want to say he's subtle in this, but because there's moments where he, there's a great bit where he yells at someone at the pharmacy where he's like, have you ever been beaten until you piss blood? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he has those great moments and, where he just goes completely over the top. And, and that's But great. it doesn't feel like it came out of left field because you see him. He's, yeah. He doesn't have the medication. He's, he's, <laughs> stre- he's tweaking out on this, so he needs this. So I was... It didn't feel out of place, whereas in a lot of... Oh, uh, but Nick Cage, especially when he's working off a really good director or actor, mm-hmm. that's and, where you see him in his prime. Well, and Rockwell. Boot, and, and an incredible script uh, by Ted Griffin, who around this point he was just... Another thing about this movie was I it did... It, I missed this one actress, but Alison Lohman, who played Nick Cage's uh, daughter in this, I... She, um, she right after that one, she did this movie right after uh, White Oleander came out. Oh, God. Oh, that movie was horrible. Wow, the rancor in your voice. I don't, oh, God. She was the I best thing, she was the best thing in movie. it, man. She oh, jeez. I mean, well, in a fashion, it was kind of like a more down-to-earth series of unfortunate events because this poor girl <laughs> was just <laughs> brutalized That's all true. throughout, all throughout the movie. But, but the reason why, you know, she... That was the thing that actually kind of got me watching that movie. I was like, well, she is really good. Yeah. And then after yeah, that, she was good. After Magic Men, she did um, Big Fish. Which was great. Which is a yeah. gorgeous movie. And then uh, uh, last last time I saw her was Drag Me to Hell. Uh-huh. Yeah, give that one a go. Uh, so by and large, if you love a good movie about with con men, and actually I'll say a wicked twist at the very end, definitely check yes. out Magic Men. It's, an, it's one of those ones that really needs to be unearthed and appreciated for what it is. Not just as a comedy, as a con man movie, but also in the annals of Ridley Scott's career, I'd say that's one that I think yeah. I, it, it showed a different side of Ridley Scott we never really saw before. The finale pipe. Oh, was great. yeah. You, you're definitely going to see a twist. Yeah. Um, overall, what do you rate it between a 1 and 10 rating? Um, uh, 1 and 10 rating, I'm going to give it, honestly, for the life of me, I can't even think about any kind of con really to this movie i just loved it all the way through honestly that's i actually give it a perfect rating in my go wow okay yeah, um, for the life of me i'm yeah when you ask me what the cons are i'm like no even on an adaptation level because i read the book it was based on i can't everything they changed from the book onwards honestly worked to make the plot tighter so it works. i can't think of anything wrong with it so i'm going to give it a perfect okay and a narcotic has a rating of five five dishes that's that's yeah. my that's my go okay i i give that one definitely a seven out of ten um, I have little quarrels with it, but just there was pacing issues. I think that he could have he could have cut it down a little bit more. Mm. There were certain scenes that were too long, dragged on way too long, but it, they serve a purpose in the end overall. But when you're watching it for a first time, you do you're reluctant to to watch it again, and you're thinking about it while you're watching it. So it kind of takes you out of the world. I will say one hitch with most movies that rely on a big twist is that sometimes it makes you can watch, probably watch it again, like a second time, just to see all the little bits that may hint at it. Yeah, I think the testament to how good a movie can be is how many times you can watch it, even beyond that. Exactly. And for me, I can watch Magic Man multiple times because, yeah, fortunately, it's a great it, performance. because fortunately, there's a lot of other things going for it other than just the twist. I think that's where Shyamalan just kept falling flat. That he oh, kept yeah. using the twist as a crutch. All right, so Matchstick Men, that's one currently streaming on Netflix as well. And the next one that we're gonna go into is Whatever Works. I am a personal huge Woody Allen fan, and this is written and directed by Woody Allen, not starring. Uh, His replacement star is Larry David, which everybody knows him as... Larry David from Curb Your Enthusiasm. And Seinfeld. Yeah, I remember remember hearing about this. Well, at first when I heard that he was gonna be a Larry David movie, I was like going, well, I guess uh, Woody Allen didn't want to keep playing himself anymore, so he had <laughs> so he brought in another another well, guy to play Woody Allen. Allen. He does this every once in yeah. a while. You you see like um what's his name the the one that did Losers? Um, oh, Jason Biggs. Yes, Jason Biggs. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, with, uh, yeah. yeah. Anything else yeah. with uh, him and Christina Ricci? Yeah. Which uh, that one I did see and I I had a bit of an enjoyment of it. it didn't stay with me like um, Sleeper or Annie Hall did, yeah. but. But he, he replaces himself a few times. Mm-hmm. He also had um, um, uh, Eisenberg play him in um, oh, To Rome With Love. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, that was great. And he has that neurosis feel to him. <laughs> and he always has a neurotic, just completely out there eccentric character in his films. And Larry David is him. And <laughs> the great thing about this film is that it actually, it's... 
it breaks down the 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 wall between the the audience and and the film. Okay. He actually, Larry David is presenting a case to you that whatever works is what you should do in life. That's his case study. So right at the beginning of the film, he's arguing with three people, and he's telling them, you know, you just gotta do whatever works in your life, and mm. that's my motto. That's I live my life by whatever works for you. That's how you should live your life awesome. and be happy. And the whole you, film is a case study of that. I will say, if you apply that logic to Woody Allen, I think he may have done that a little too oh, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely <laughs> agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Uh, I love and death. Oh, when I met James Tolkien, <laughs> love that. when I met James Tolkien so at um great. at a Dragon Con, I talked. I wanted to talk to him about love and death. Yeah. And because I was like, I was curious, what is it like to work with Woody Allen? And he and he said like, he, he's he's a very smart man, but the dude doesn't shut up. <laughs> That's the same thing that John Cusack said yeah. when I asked him. Ah, uh, Bullets Over Broadway. Yes. Not only Bullets Over Broadway, Shadows and Fog. Oh. I asked him about Shadows and Fog. Okay. And he was like, dude, this was amazing working with him because he is so knowledgeable and he doesn't give direction. He gives mm -hmm. a feel. He tells the actor, this is what I'm going for. Do what you can with it. And I'm not going to tell you a single word after that. Huh. You do what you want. The p the amount of talent oh that he's had God. work on his movies over yeah. the years, and there's a lot of people who are pretty much against a lot of things that he's done. But my God, the but, talent list is ridiculous. But evidently they do it because to work with Woody Allen is, is an experience. I mean, the man is a deplorable person as a man. Mm -hmm. He's a deplorable person as a father, and he's just a really bad person overall. Yet he makes a great art. Yeah. And he he makes he's prolific like no other director I've ever seen. I mean, the man so, writes and directs a film every year since Annie Hall came out yeah. in 1978. Oh, think about it. Yeah, you're right. I, he hasn't missed a beat on that. So, Speaking, actually, whatever though, works is 2009 yeah. streaming Netflix starring Evan um sorry, Larry David. Ed, Larry David and Evan Rachel Wood oh. and uh what do you call it? Basically, I give this uh, an eight out of ten. It's one of my better, one of the better Woody Allen films, in my opinion. Well, what's it? I, I haven't seen this one, but what can you get like some kind of clip notes of what it's about at all? It's just basically an analysis of his life and okay. why yeah, he wants, why he's he's protecting and proving to the to the world that whatever works mm -hmm. is the best way to approach life. Okay, so it it's, is, it's okay. a case study. All right, so it's oh, all right, so it's I, now I see what you're getting at. Is there's not a typical narrative. Exactly. At all. Okay. And he breaks down that, that fourth wall a lot. He talks to the camera all the time, presenting that case to him and saying, look, this is yeah, this is why. This is why I'm talking about. This is great. This is great. This, this is why we need to do this as our, our motto for everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just basically a case study of that. And if you like Woody Allen movies, if you like Larry David movies or shows, it's very much to that style. It's very... Mm -hmm. New York Jewish uh, comedy, <laughs> and it's it's very good and very well paced. Now here's an interesting uh, quandary: What would be the movie if you're trying to like tell people to just you know enjoy you know try to get them to open up to them? What would be the movie you'd recommend to people? Annie Hall. Annie Hall? By far, that's on my top five. Unless they're Star Wars fans, because Star Wars fans hate Annie Hall. No. For once, yeah. Anyone who knows, <laughs> yeah. The reason why is because Annie Hall took the Oscar from it. Yep. Um, the one I tell people to watch because I think it's actually the most accessible is I, I, I would say Sleeper. Really? Yeah. You think so? Yeah, because I think it's very dated. A lot of people might get turned off by the well, dating. For, well, fortunately, the thing about that one, well, that was kind of a deliberate choice on Alan's part because the humor is very Chaplin esque, which is ironic because yeah. it takes place in the future. Yeah. And it's the future according to the way Woody Allen would see it, which I got to admit, his version of the future is kind of hilarious. Oh, dude, that that um, the booth. Oh, that, that booth. Or, oh, the, the confessional the booth. booth? Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing, but then you got the friggin' the, Jew, the Jewish robots. One of them I know is voiced by Jackie Mason. He's <laughs> like, what, what, what's your matter with you? You got pauses? You got pauses? Uh, that's another one for that's good. for theater buffs, actually. There was a play he wrote called uh, Don't Drink the Water. Okay. Um, great play. A long time ago, it was made into a very bad movie. You can tell Alan had nothing to do with it, but yeah. it, it bastardized the play. Yeah. But uh, for HBO, I think it was HBO. He, yeah, it was. Yeah, he did a uh, much better film adaptation with Michael J. Fox, uh, Mayim Bialik. Match point. 
yeah. the match point. Um, that will definitely be the modern version of Annie Hall for Woody Allen. I think that one will be more identifiable to a modern audience. I will say that one, um, yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think when I watched it, I kind of was blasé on it, principally because the plot of Match Point was pretty much a full-length feature-length version of one of the side plot, the B plot in Crimes and Misdemeanors. Yes. Yeah. I just remember vividly just going... I mean, he reuses a lot of stuff. He recycles a lot of stuff in his movies. Yeah. But, I mean, they're great. They're they're well done. Mm -hmm. And, come on, Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett, yeah. Scarlett Johansson she, was... She kind, of, she, kind of became his, she kind of became his uh, Tippi Hendren for a... Do you ever hear the story about what led to him get buying clerks? No. Oh, yeah, yes. Well, yeah, if On you want... Actually, I won't... Yeah, we're, we're running for a while, but I'm going to tell you. Uh, if you want to see this story... Uh, on the Clerks uh, DVD, I think yeah. it's on the Blu-ray as well, there's a great documentary called The Snowball Effect. Yes. And yes. that snowball effect in question relates to when Harvey Weinstein... And it gives you it gives you the motivation that if you are an upcoming artist, that play to theaters. Go to festivals. Even if nobody's at your movie, all it takes is one person. Yeah. And that one person will make it big for you. I mean, There's multiple case studies about that. Yeah, one of the things I've been learning with doing casserole, my view count is, is mm -hmm. I'm trying to cure that, but sometimes it all comes down to just the one or two, peop the one or two people who see it and want, and want you to keep doing more. And that's, exactly. that's what you gotta keep doing. It's, as what I've, as, like I say, through tenacity we gain true enlightenment. Exactly. And I mean, the same thing with us and Man Bites Film. I mean, the, the, we do it for the fun of it. That, that's mm -hmm. what we do it. A view, oh, that's great. That means another person shared or, or saw this film and was given the point of view that we have about films. Greatness and politics from and everything else. Greatness from small <laughs> beginnings. Yeah. And, I mean, look at the community we're already building. We're already working with... Yeah, like, we have like, a casserole. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. I mean, what else? But there's a couple other people that we're already working with. So, yeah. I mean, we're building the community, and that's, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I mean... We're all here to help each other. That's, yeah, that's... I mean, honestly, that, um, that's one, I mean, one of my major inspirations. I mean, you look up what's happening up north with some of the guys up north with Nostalgia Critics, Cinema Snob, yeah. um, Obscurus Lupa, all, um, who is it, Linkara, all of them. It's because they all happen to be in the same area together, and, and they all do stuff together, and that's just insanely cool. I mean, but, and they are stressing, this is the new wave as far as yeah. online entertainment, band together, team up, that's the way to go. Yeah. So on that note, um, whatever works, definitely recommend it. And it's also streaming on Netflix. Definitely. So I guess in closing. Yep. My yeah. name is Lewis. Name is John. And this is Man Bites Film. We'll see you guys next Friday for another episode.